Ready? Three, two. We became friends first. We fell in love and got married. And now we're starting a family together. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, like we said in the first episode, we are going to continue to talk about postpartum depression. That is the reason why we quit filming this YouTube channel. And we are going to talk about how it affected our relationship and how we got through it. Right. So, and, and I think we is the key word there because you went through it, but it affected all of us. And I think we have to talk about the highs, the lows, and how we got through it as a family. Right. And I never thought, so I'm very open. Jeff, I tell him everything. I tell my family everything. I'm a very open person. And for me not being able to tell that I had postpartum depression, it was just like the biggest secret. And it was just weighing on me. And I hid it from Jeff for two months, okay? I started feeling, I always called it my dark thoughts. So I started feeling suicidal, never had those feelings before ever. Like I would just... um I think it's important. I'm, I don't want to get too graphic here, but I think it's important that we go into somewhat detail in case someone out there is feeling the same way as right. you. And it, and all of a sudden they're like, that's exactly what happened right. to me. And I don't mean to re-spark those memories, but I think it's important because we're pretty open about well, talking about it. Two, people don't understand. Like um, on social media, people would be like, oh, you're just negative. You're just depressed. You're just this. You're just that. And I'm like, no. You don't even know what I'm going through. You're not, you don't even know what I feel and you don't know me. And, um, so every time I would go to my doctor's office, she, she was the sweetest. She was so bubbly. This was in Santa Monica, Lawson's doctor. And so I would just be like, Oh, it's so great. I love it. And just be so happy. And it was, was just, Oh, it was totally fake. And just put on this fake because I was too embarrassed to tell her I was having these thoughts and I thought that she would think that I was crazy for having these thoughts. So two months, not telling you, Jeff and I I knew are, something was up though. It was, a, it was a strain on relationship, but I didn't know what postpartum was. That was part of the problem too. Right. So Jeff is, I'm not telling him anything. Jeff just thinks I'm negative and angry at that time. He's just like, what is wrong with you? Like, we have this healthy baby. You're just not happy. And I was, I was just, just angry. I was and getting up doing the feeding feedings because she, you tried breastfeeding, but it stopped right away, right? Yes, I tried. I think I did it like two months, a month. I would pump for 40 minutes and only get two ounces of milk. Lawson was colicky. He cried all the time. I would just sit in the dark in a rocking chair and just cry. That's all I did. I think that's probably why I don't care about that Santa Monica apartment because I feel like it's, it brings, it's like bad memories or something. And I just was so lonely and depressed. And I would tell Jeff, I'd be like, take Lawson. You two get out, like go somewhere. I remember some of our friends came over, the girls came over and they were all going out to like a spot that we normally would go to. And I remember being like, I just want to go. I just want to go there. I don't want to take care of a baby. I want to get away from all of this. And Jeff was, um, uh, he would take Lawson to restaurants and all the guys would let Lawson go. And I think that's why Jeff and those guys have such a tight bond. And I have a bond with those guys because they were so good to me and um, always looked out for me. I love all the your friends like brothers. But anyways, so fast your forward. Too, so right? here we go. Yeah, but I I mean, they're your friends, but they're my, they become my friends too. So anyways, let's, let's, no, hang on. I want to go to this. Okay, okay. So what? fast forward, all this is going on. I'm just negative. I'm depressed. I'm like, I don't want to do the YouTube. I'm just angry. Louie would come over Hold on, and be me, like, Jordan, just was smile. That, was with the friends before we left for Christmas or was that after Christmas? That was before Christmas. Oh, what? That so was that was like, Christmas. because I remember that night and it was like a highlight. Of yeah. like, so what? Ha let me just finish this story before we move okay. on. Long story short, I went home to be with um, Lawson because he needed to go to sleep, and we were just across the street having sushi and having some drinks. 
Jordan, I wanted her to go out because she was depressed. It seemed like she was depressed. It turns out she was. And I wanted her to go out and just get some time with some girlfriends, with our friends, whoever, and have fun. And then they all came back to the apartment because they felt bad for me. Yeah. And we ended up having some drinks and laughing and telling stories. And we were all there with uh, Lawson. But that was a really special night that I'll never forget. Yeah, With, that with was, our L.A. crew and oh, our tiny apartment. We went apartment. to 7-Eleven. And Kelly bought all the... Cheeto. It was like all this crazy stuff, but I, I wanted to, that was like going on in my mind. I know you guys probably don't care about that story, but right. it was very special to me. And I don't know where you're going to go from here, but I'm going to Christmas now. That's where I want to go. So, okay. We're going, we're at Christmas and we were in Chicago fighting like crazy. And I needed to go see my grandparents. So we drove to Southern Illinois from Chicago to go see my grandparents. We fought the entire way on um, to my grandparents' house, and um, uh, we. Let me say, at this point, we still don't know what's going on. I think she's not happy because we had a child, perhaps, I, and I'm ecstatic that I had a little baby boy. Right? right. So these are. This is what's going on in my mind. What's going on in her mind is something totally different that I couldn't even comprehend. And this is why we're like this at each other's throats right. at this time. And I already know where you're going to the basketball game, yes. right? Yeah. And he, he know, he yeah, knows because there's stuff. certain points that stick out to me throughout this process, right. and that's a huge one. So we're at a basketball game, and um, a high school basketball game. And I'm going to be vague because I don't want to, I don't know if this person would want me to say their name or not. Somebody that I've known um, through my aunt came up to me and just started talking. And she was like, you know, if you ever get postpartum depression when... Um, when I had my kids, I had it and she goes, but people didn't talk about it then. And we, I'm not going to go what she said about hers cause I don't want to put her business out, but what she was describing to me, how she felt in my head, I was like, Oh my God, that's how I feel. And I just wanted to tell her and be like, that's how I'm feeling. And I just sat there and nodded and was like, mm-hmm, yeah, uh-huh. And, um, so um, that really hit home to me. Because she spoke in detail. Because she spoke in details and was, and I was like, wow, okay. So Jeff, okay, we're going back to Chicago now. I just had to throw in the basketball thing because this was the moment it, that made Because me I out. heard what she said too. Jeff was sitting beside me. I kind of want to tell, but I, again, I won't. Because it's very similar to thoughts that people have. On this subject, I've learned they're very similar. So you could give the thoughts that you had, at least for some truth, because a lot of the thoughts that you had, she also had, and I overheard you guys talking, which was the very the very first time I thought maybe something more was going on right. than I realized. So we go to back to Chicago. Jeff's parents are watching Lawson. Jeff and I, for some reason, I don't know why we went to the mall. Maybe we were going to buy Christmas or something. Or um, we were going to the mall for some reason. You mean you go to malls to go shopping? Well, I didn't know if it was Christmas. <laughs> it worked. I'm trying to, I, when I get uncomfortable, I make jokes. But yes, this was another pinpoint moment that I remember very specifically. So we're, I don't know what started the fight. I think I was being just very negative. And Jeff's like, oh, I think this is exactly what you said. I think... Jeff goes, okay, what's going on with you? You didn't talk the whole time on the way there, on the way back. You've been negative. What's up? And then... We're he, in a parking spot, by the way. Yes. We didn't go in the mall yet. We're in a parking spot. It's snowing. It's gray. I remember exactly where we were parked. I remember exactly... Yeah. I could see... I we could close my eyes and paint a picture. Uh, at each other. And then he goes, you know, if you didn't want to be married and you didn't want kids, you should have told me. This is kind of late right now. And he goes... What's going on? And then I'm screaming back at him. And then I think I just, I was like, I'm depressed. And then I just told him, I was like, I feel like killing myself. And then, then we, then I just started like letting everything out. And then it was like, both our tempers just like calmed down. It was like, when she said, I feel like killing myself, I'm going to get like emotional enough. But <laughs> because she went into detail, I'm going to tell you, I, again, I keep trying to push you to this point. I don't want to get you emotional, but you were saying you wanted to drive your car into oncoming traffic. That was one of the ones that stuck out to me. I know it's going to get you emotional, me too. But 
it was the moment I was so full of anger and like disappointment and hate. This is what's going through my mind. Okay. Now I look back and how selfish of me, but I didn't know what was going on. And the moment she told me in specifics that she wanted to kill herself and how, and the thoughts that were running through her head, like you said, the energy, all that madness and sadness and hate or whatever it was went out the door. And I was like, we need to get you some help right now. We're going to call the doctor, something more, all my, I didn't barely had suspicions that something was going on were right and all that everything was out the window and all i wanted to do was help jordan from that point on so we get back to california and jeff goes you're making an appointment you're telling the doctor if you don't i'm calling her because he didn't believe yeah. that i was going to tell her i was going there <laughs> i'm not even joking so i go to my appointment and i asked the nurse i loved her she worked i think she was like the nurse and also an assistant to the doctor she also, she, I asked her, I said, will you watch Lawson for me so I can talk to the doctor? She goes, oh my gosh, of course I love babies. And um, she goes, your blood pressure, she just taking my blood pressure. She goes, your blood pressure is sky high. And I was like, oh, it is? And she goes, yeah. She goes, the doctor is going to be in here and she's going to talk to you. So the doctor comes in and I'm sitting there and she's like, hey, honey, how was your Christmas? How is things? And she, like I said, I loved her. She was so sweet. And I just start bawling, crying. And she's like, oh my gosh, what is wrong with you? And like, what's, what's, tell me what's wrong. And then I just tell her everything. And she's like, do you want to talk to a therapist? Do you want to see a psychologist? Um, but whenever she's telling me this stuff, I instantly got defensive because I'm like, she thinks I'm crazy. That's why she wants me to go to a psychologist. That's why this and that. And then I got even more upset. But I told her, I go, no, you're my doctor. I only want to talk to you. I don't want to talk to anybody else. So she goes, okay. She goes, we're going to prescribe you and get you on something. Because I was embarrassed, too, to take antidepressants. That was another reason why. And you shouldn't be. I'm not saying it's bad to take it. But for me, I never took medicine before. I never had suicidal thoughts. So for me, it was like I, I thought it was a bad thing. You thought something was wrong right. with you. Right. So, and it's not a bad thing if you not take that, like, it saved you. What do you, what yeah. do you mean? It well, saved you. you, after I started taking them, I didn't realize how many people do take them because so many people are like, oh, I take that. Oh, I do that. I don't it's know why so it's so taboo or so hard. I kind of want to get into that too. It took you a long time to tell me what was going on, which solved it instantly. Why was it hard for you to then tell your doctor so that you kind of touched on it? You thought something was broken inside I you? I guess. I guess. I just felt. I was more so embarrassed and I didn't want people to think I was crazy. And um, I couldn't even tell my mom. And I tell my mom everything, everything. And um, like too much. And I just, I just couldn't say it. And so anyways, um, so she got me on medicine and she told me, she goes, honey, you walk, get outside and you walk. The sun helps. I think, oh my gosh. If you lived out in California, you had seen me on San Vicente. I walked all over Santa Monica. And that's probably how I lost my baby weight, too, is because that's all I did. I would get up. I would get Lawson. And just being outside made it better. I mean, I was by myself alone. That was another thing with postpartum. You just want to be alone. You don't want to be around anyone. Let's get on to when you start feeling better. Um, no, like, so you went through the embarrassment, you had those thoughts. Now, when was the first time you actually started taking the medicine? And from there, when did you start feeling different? So Do you remember I can't remember specifics? like a specific time. I just know I started. You started taking the medicine. Yeah. And I just. Did you feel shameful when you were taking the medicine for. No, because no one knew I was taking it. And I just, uh, and it was just me and my doctor. I just didn't want to go talk to a therapist. That was my thing. I was like, I don't need, I always feel, I don't know. I just felt like it was a waste of money. And I was like, we pay all this money for health insurance. I can just speak with her. I remember you getting better. I just remember your attitude changing. Your relationship with Lawson definitely got better. That's what I noticed. And then our relationship got better. I think that we put all of our cards on the table. I'm sure the medicine helped. I'm sure the walking helped. I'm sure it's a combination of all that. Right. But I think first and foremost, it was being honest with each other about what was going on. Right. And us working through that well, I think as a couple. I told you that it was like we were just connecting so much better. You yeah. Know, it just everything got better. And, um, you know, people don't realize pregnancy, it's, it's a lot. I just thought it was going to be like this 
fairy tale because everybody kept telling me at the sh baby shower, oh, it's the best thing in the world. You're never going to experience something like this. And I remember after I had lost and I was like, I have no idea what these people are talking about because I do not feel this at all. And uh, <laughs> so that's, I mean, that's the truth. I know. And, um, but I mean, now, obviously, it's totally different. Now I, it's like, you can't imagine your life without them. But at the beginning, it just didn't click for me. And it's not me being negative or... Every couple goes through that. Again, we're, I talked about a little in the past episode, all these perfect parents on social media. It's not a true story. No one's buying that story. Everyone has their ups and downs. We'll be honest with ours about what happened to us in our relationship. I don't think we ever... I think the closest we had to breaking up was or at least talked about it was that postpartum thing because I didn't realize what was going on. Right. Then we had that conversation and I thought it was um, a lesson for later on in our relationship because I, now when we have a problem that builds, not to that level obviously, but when we have a problem that builds, we try to put our cards on the table and talk about it. And we learned a lot of these tools strangely right. at marriage boot camp, right? Oh, which that sounds, can be another episode, that's good. Which sounds silly to a lot of people because a lot of people think that's it's a silly show. It's on We Network. We did it in case you guys didn't know. And uh, they they're real therapists on that show, and a lot of tools that they well, use the on the show. Well, therapists now us. they're um, we you have to say their names. It was Carol and Jim, and they're the ones that were the real therapists. Now it's different therapists. But when we were on, they were like legit, and they definitely saved our relationship because just like any relationship you have those roller coasters we definitely were but we went on that we, show thinking like listen let's just get paid get yeah. through it and get out not knowing that we we're gonna get broken down and, and then build back up again and we um i don't know i think it really did after that it's almost like we bowed to each other like we will make sure we will make our relationship work and I think we take pride in that in our relationship that and we work on it we have to work on our relationship every day like we have to I mean the main things that they we learned we communicate we have to communicate and um, making time for ourselves I respect I respect Jeff's um, alone time he respects my alone time in sex and that'll get you through <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's really it, like about the postpartum. After six months, I was fine. I went to the doctor. I said, I'm not feeling these thoughts anymore. And uh, I, she got me off of it. And I had Weaned to take, off of it. I winged off of it. And um, I haven't taken any depression medicine since. And yeah. it's all good. I actually, when we moved in here, I saved all that medicine, remember? Because you didn't know what was going to happen. Yeah, I didn't know what was going to happen, but it was kind of like a memory. And when we moved into our house, I flushed it all down the toilet because I was like, I don't need these. Good for you. So I think the, well, I don't know the moral of the story. I was trying to close it and I don't know how. I'm saying communication. Well. <laughs> Speaking of communicating, before we go, I didn't ask you this earlier. I bought like a dozen phone chargers, okay? You know where I'm going with this? Where's the one up in the bathroom? Why'd you take that out of there? What one in the bathroom? There was one in the bathroom that I like to go in there and listen to my podcast. And if I'm you want to in. start nitpicking, how about, there's you pick eight up, of them. how about you pick up your clothes from my vanity? We're still moving in. No. That's no excuse uh, about no. the phone charger. Where'd it go? I don't know. There's eight of them. They're all over the place. Well, go look. I don't know. For now on, if it's plugged in, leave it there. And for now on, pick your clothes up off my vanity. There we go. See? Communicate. We're going to end this episode and go work on a relationship. <laughs> so make sure to tune in next week if we're still here. Who knows? <laughs> we, we don't know. All right, guys. Um, I hope you. I hope this was informative. And um, if you are a new parent, and um, just send us questions of things you'd like us to talk about because, you know, we like to ramble. But have a great day. Stay safe and healthy during this quarantine. Yeah, next time we'll talk a little bit more about the quarantine and what's going on. And our other child is here. He's not, we're not negligent parents. He's upstairs sleeping. And please don't write me a negative comment about my son's passing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Bye. We'll talk to you next time. All right, you can count us out if you want. <laughs> Three, two, one. We love you, Lewis.
Here, let Louis cut to this part, okay? okay. So let him cut. Um, okay, so where we Welcome left. Welcome back. This is like to be continued. Hold on, sorry, sorry. Are you looking here? Yes. Okay, I am. good. Okay. Louis, I've came a long way since the first season, you know? <laughs> Hang on, I have a story. Cause you know in LA people kinda, people have like attitudes. Everybody's quick to blow their horn and they think they're tough. And then as soon as you <laughs> say something, they back down. That's how they are out there. So this lady pulls up uh, beside me and goes, um, you don't need to be walking on the street with your baby. You don't know what me and my baby need. And I just start screaming at her. And I go, your sidewalks are too bumpy for me and my baby.